crossover for Caspian. As we've got two, one, these one. two North American players fighting for that Grand Finals winner spot. We're going into game number one, and Luna on the guitars and Paula on the spear, two of the favorite weapons in the meta here in 2022, going head to head as Impala has been on Kaya long before other players were picking it up. And Luna preparing that Caspian just for today is now getting comboed off the right side of the stage as Impala takes a small lead. Oh man, this is the thing though, like Impala has been in this position many times before where it's like Impala seated lower than most people would think and then suddenly decides that one day I'm going to make the run of my life and what better of a day to pick than now. Oh, and look at that. Luna going for that head start with the weapon throw towards the top of the stage and Impala just getting right underneath him, hits the nair, forces him over onto the gauntlet to continue struggling. Luna is the first stock and he has him off the side of the stage. Edge guard situation for Kaz to come up here and he avoids the side stick. Great punish. And you can see that we're going to find out who can get that first stock. Luna already throwing out two different signatures, neither a third, and that's just going to be a confirm. And you see right there, that. Impala knew the Sarah was going to KO. Didn't even go for the guaranteed D light there. He said, I'm trying to speed run you, Luna. Everyone's talking about, oh, you're going to grand finals. I got something to say about that. That's right. And the outcome of this is going to be North America in the grand finals regardless. But who's it going to be, Impala or Luna? And Impala's making a great case for himself. So that's there in an air. Connects, catching Luna, trying to get right on top of this person. He's and right far back, stopping Luna from getting any of those guitar strings that we've seen him have so much success with throughout the day. Oh man, and Luna just struggling to be able to find an open. That neutral light's gonna hit, but that deeper from Kai is gonna keep Impala alive a little bit longer here. And that D light recovery will be enough to secure the KO as Luna is answering back just a little bit here. We'll see how long it takes for Impala to find a weapon. Yeah, Luna doing a great job there with uh, guarding those weapons. One comes over to the spawn, Impala with two quick uppercuts, picks up the spear, takes the guitar neutral light for his efforts. But now both players on either side of the stage fighting for center. Luna dives in with the dare, but the pogo in the nair tacks on even more more damage as Luna goes into orange. And Luna trying to get back to center. Impala still having control. And these side light mix-ups are working so well for Impala in game one that Luna may go down and stock again unless he can figure something out. And one of the things I love about Impala's gameplay is I think he is one of few beautiful <laughs> ground pound the stage spike there to go ahead and secure that second stock. But as I was saying, he's one of the few players, I think, that does certain things with Spear. I think him and Stingray use Spear neutral air in a way to get all this extra damage that I don't see other players go for. A lot of the time, there's no for the D-Lights there and call it a day. But these guys, no. Yeah, we're already seeing, right, when you hit that first down air and spear, we talk about that pogo effect, right? You go for the second one, the third one, but Impala mixing in with those neutral airs. He gets those dodge ins, those dodge in places, and Luna yet to be able to do anything. And he's grounded down airs from the bow. Even though he's getting that animation where he knocks it to the ground, he's getting the hit every time, and Luna just can't get back to the stage. Two nairs almost into a recovery. Impala working on his way towards a two stock here in game number one over the best player in North America. Luna gets a side like nothing else afterwards, and Impala continues oh. racking on the damage. Oh my gosh, he went for the tricky weapon throw there. Luna definitely not expecting that. And this Caspian has been working on everyone all day, but Impala is not phased by it. All Finally, right. a side six to be able to take that stock. But at this point, we already have light red on Luna. Impala's probably looking for one, two, maybe nares, and then a D-Light recovery will close this match out. Or if he picks up a spear, you know that D6 coming. He's got to pick up any weapon at this point because Luna's been keeping him starved and he's keeping the combos coming. We finally got to see that side the highlight of Caspian's kit there, get that knockout. Knocks out so early because of the high force, but you gotta hit it. Luna falling down, trying to get the double nair spike, and Impala back to the stage. A risky down sick. Luna doesn't get the punish, but Impala is starting to crumble here under the pressure of Luna in game number one as the oh, side kick hits. And there it is. The highlight of that kick coming out strong there as he catches him midair and sends him flying off the side of the stage. And honestly, Taza, I like, I think you and I and the crowd watching this all kind of feel like Man, that really felt as if it should have been Impala's game, yeah. right? But the moment it came to that last stock scenario and Impala had to close it out, yeah. you could see the jitters hit immediately. The entire game, Impala was doing such a great job having that keep away game. And every time Luna went in for something to get started, whether it be a side light or a down air or a falling nair, it was the bow neutral air that was stopping him from getting down. And then once that first neutral air hit, three, four, many came afterwards because it, Luna could just not get back to the stage. But in that last stock scenario, everything changed. The pressure started to get to him. And I'm glad I was able to talk about that side stick after that second stock because that is really the reason Luna is going in on this character because despite playing as well as you can, you could just do it all with the guitars and the gauntlets alone. That diamond head side stick on guitars is going to eliminate you at orange even if you have 10 defense. And Kaya sitting at seven, still pretty beefy, went down really early on that last stock, uh, giving Luna that game one win.
And granted, we're gonna go ahead and have the same legend picks and we're going to Small Brawl Haven for game number two. And I hope in this game, Impala doesn't crumble under the pressure. We've already seen, yes, Impala can hang. So just go ahead and close it out and make Luna earn it. That's right, and here we go. Impala hitting that neutral and an air, and the Nair Dragos here will kill off the top of the stage a lot sooner, but at the same time, Luna is already at a point where a side stick could delete this uh, the stock coming out from Impala, and with that neutral stick hitting, Impala has to be careful about that, and Whoa. there it is! Flam, but the side stick on the gauntlet's blasting them away and taking that first stock in under 30 seconds. Yeah, just able to shoot that beam out with the gauntlet down stick, just saying, hey, you know what, you better watch yourself, because otherwise, I'm gonna go ahead and close this Stock out, and just like that, I mean, take a look at Impala, so far behind, was so close to winning game one, and I get scared in scenarios like this, where it's like, is the is the train just gonna crash? Or did you just run out? Do you need a Red Bull to get yourself back into it? This is right. not the time to need a Red Bull. Yeah, and the ground pound hits there, and Impala is trying to get that momentum back, but you gotta see here, because Luna with the gauntlet, nice oh. side light, gets the Nair, gravity cancel, neutral light to tack on even more damage to Impala, and as he jumps off the side of the stage, trying to pressure, maybe putting out a Nair, a ground pound, something, no, Luna just comes back, puts up the side lights, and the wow. Nair in the recovery takes Luna off the top of the stage and even up the game two to two. Okay, and that's not a conversion you see people go for often. A lot of the time it's gonna be that down air into the side air, but Impala said, you know what, I think you might go high. I'm just gonna go for the recovery and calling out Luna's movement. And now, I think Impala's back. We got some damage being racked up here, playing well in the neutral, and of course, on a stage like this, it is so small, you can't run away here. You oh, guys man. have to get in there, get close, and personal. And look at that. So many great falling down airs. Gets the grounded neutral there. Puts it the down stick. Wrong direction. Luna falls in with the punish, but no weapons can be seen for him to get a good one. Gauntlet's picked up. The down stick come through again. Oh. But the D light side air after that side light pickup means Impala takes the lead once again in game number two. However, Flambo, we were here before. The Qatar side stick came in, and then Luna just destroyed Impala's defense in that final moment of that game. And we're close to maybe having a repeat of that scenario. Nice job jumping out of the way of that neutral signature, and Impala puts in the pressure with the neutral light, but he hasn't gotten too much damage yet, and this could go back to an even game in just a matter of seconds. And Impala has to watch out for the weapon throw. That's essentially what got Luna the stock, forcing Impala into the corner. He wasn't privy to spot dodge in time and was able to use his superior positioning to close that stock out with a Qatar Sayer. And now we have a final stock scenario. Those Qatars, if Luna gets one good dodge read, could lead to disaster for Impala. So he has to be careful. Don't go off stage versus him unless you're extremely confident because I'm turning around on you and you don't want to be here. Somehow, Impala makes it back with the down sick from Head. They are fighting in this corner, and Paula finally makes it back to the stage. Oh, or the neutral light gets him. Chase dodges up, falls to the nair, weapon throw, picks up a fresh pair of guitars. The side stick can come through, but Impala stops the pressure with the side light. Neutral light boxes him out, and Impala really trying to get the oh, no The side way. stage catches Luna right as he was about to duck beneath the stage, takes him off the top, and brings it to a game three with an even set count. That's why I said you gotta make him earn it because Impala right there, I don't know how Impala does that. Pretty much every person I've spoken to that plays Kaya is usually like, yo bro, the spear side stick is like a bad one. But like somehow Impala, every time he throws it out, it always manages to connect and it manages to KO. I feel like it doesn't have force like that, but somehow he knows the range so perfectly. Yeah, That's on, mastery. On top of having a lot of end lag on, on with, you have to be precision perfect to oh. be able to get that stab, right? And uh, oh, I, I react to that, but just to finish that thought on the side stick, the one few cases where I thought, okay, this is a really great signature, was watching Akno and Twos use the punished two, Blasters players for one, using neutral and downlight a lot. But in ones, you don't exactly have that thing where you're punishing somebody on that whiff. But here, Impala, like you said, still making it work, and Luna over the tie along, bringing out the Mordex in game number three, as the sight is just popping off here at the very beginning of the game. Oh, I don't think he got to touch, and that's just gonna be a stop, just like that one oh. more. No, it doesn't line it up quite right to go ahead and close out the edge guard, and that's gonna be a really big drop, honestly, for Luna, because look at all this damage Impala has been able to tack on now because of that missed corner guard, and Impala answering back so loudly, trying to get that KO off the top and really make a statement. Yeah, luckily for Impala, that dare can't active input towards the top of the stage because that caught super high up there. But yeah, Flambo, he was 15 seconds into almost taking that first stock in this game three, but Impala makes it back while sweating, and then tacks on a ton of damage himself. Now we're in a dead even game, and the first stock could go either way. Luna with one nair, no follow up that side light into, oh, goes out for the recovery. Can't get that recovery to connect after all these combo stars, and Impala's still surviving here on this first stop. 
Okay, they are just trying to see if they can find that KO. Confirm a save from the site. There's not going to be enough from Luna. Tries to go off stage and find a down air, but can't get that one to connect. But what was that conversion? Hello? Goes for the weapon throw. The immediate gravity cancel picks up the site and sends him packing. What an amazing knockout there. And Paul again hit by that weapon throw, but just too late for Luna. Sidelight hits, puts him off the side of the stage, and the weapon guard here is pretty clever. If that Nair didn't hit, he could have starved Impala of the weapon a little bit longer. Impala trying to get Luna to, to do a reaction there with that weapon throw into the ground. Picks it right back up, though, and Luna doesn't take the bait, and the damage continues to rack on to the Luna's favor. Oh, man, and Luna caught the recovery with that one, but an exhausted recovery from Impala as a very aggressive fight back to the stage is actually going to secure the first stock on the side of Luna. And here we go, Luna with the side. Really focusing on this weapon after that switch off from Diamond Head. Sidelight comes through with Punish, gets the dare. Now Luna looking for that opening there with that neutral life. And Impala, even when Impala's missing these openings, he's staying stacked on top of Luna, and Luna can't get those neutral lights to connect. And while off stage, avoiding everything that Luna's putting out, Impala is taking this game back to his favor. Oh my goodness, Impala? Beautiful down signal, not quite enough. The weapon throw is gonna connect, but not enough juice to secure the KO and won't be able to find the final pogo instead. Oh, that almost, that oh, almost combo, that would've been still, wild. He's still trying to combo the other weapon throws as well. The Nair comes through and Impala in the process of starving Luna from the weapon. Oh, perfect. He's continuing the combos. Every weapon that gets thrown off the side of the stage, Luna just has to struggle back towards it. And the Nair hits him one more of those. Impala gets it, takes the lead in game number three, and is one stock away from bringing this to match point. Oh my goodness, I, I, I. I don't know what to say, Taz. I don't think anyone expected the match to go quite like this, but Impala showing why, one, he's so skilled, and two, y'all should be playing Bo. Why aren't y'all playing Bo? <laughs> I mean, Impala has been on Kaya since the beginning, as the legend, since ever since the legend was released, and he's doing so well with it here at BCX, the biggest tournament of the year in Luna, with the scythe, gets the scythe, and gravity cancels, and that seven defense finally coming in strong here for Impala, and we've learned that if Luna can't finish off the stock, Impala Impala gets like an extra 50 damage and then some. Okay, and another Sayer and Scythe can struggle to find the KOs if you're not getting those early stocks off the side of the map. Now it's gonna be another Sayer after the first one wasn't able to KO to go ahead and bring Impala down to the final stock. But if Paula can find a weapon, he's gonna be fine to go ahead and try to go ahead and collect this game. But the map is Whoa. so small that he takes so much damage just to get this first weapon. Luna's essentially brought it back already. He's brought it back and that Sayer hitting there is huge. Impala dash jumps back. Goes to the ground, puts oh. up the nares. We're talking about how well his nares oh. is Luna's adapting. Sarah hits him in the side of the stage. One down, everybody huge, but Impala with the recovery. Takes Luna off the top of the stage. Fresh scythe picked up, and Impala still in the edge guard scenario. And is it gonna be that side stick again? No! Oh, again. And Pogo into recovery. That's twice that Impala has gotten that knockout. And look at that, just completely cool, confident, and collected as he brings Luna. PR number one in North America to match point. Two to one. What's Luna gonna pick here? The diamond head went away. The Tylone came out and it looked honestly just as difficult. And then just, just think, Flambo. In the beginning of that game, uh, game number three, 15 seconds in, that was almost a zero to knockout. Like, yeah. The Impala barely survived, sweating to touch the stage, and somehow takes the lead after that. Playing phenomenally. I, 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 I don't know what to say. Is Luna gonna go ahead and go back to Old Faithful? Is it gonna be a Taros kind of day? Is Zip gonna get what he wanted? Or is he gonna stick true to his game plan, maybe go to Caspian and say, you know what, we're gonna keep going with what think, I was doing and play a little bit better? You, you think the break glass, break glass in case of emergency pick is the other for the Taros? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah it's like, I, I think it's just... It's been some time. I mean, it's what Luna made his name on in the game. And he's thinking long and hard about this pick here because if he goes down to the elimination bracket, that is going to be a tough road to go through, right? Impala got through Stingray, okay. PR number two, three zero to get here. And it's looking like it's going to be Ty Lung for the match point in Impala patiently waiting, saying, all right, let's go on to the next game, because once I win this, I will be representing North America in the Grand Finals. Okay, and it looks like, looking at the stage picks, Luna has left Small Brawlhaven open yet again, so we it's could there. end up going back there. I don't know he's got one more if that band. was the smartest pick. He's, okay. he's got one more band. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There it is, there it is, there Hashtag it is. Hashtag coaching? <laughs> <laughs> so with what? Apocalypse, Demon Island, and Small Fortress Alliance back, I'm feeling a Demon Island pick here from, uh, from Impala because he's just so great with those signatures. When he's got those edge guard scenarios, we saw the down stick, right? Hit and catch Luna as he was jumping up from the side of the stage. We saw the side stick on the spear hit. 
while he was trying to get back to the top of the stage. But no, small Fortress of Lions would have gone through. An island. And in the game that um, Impala won, right, we saw how great he's been with the spear recovery off the pogos, but also the spear ground pounds on the edge guards. Yes. And on this stage in particular, Three, we saw that two, stage spike. Gain that spear ground pound and hit him in the side of the stage and send him straight down, where in any other stage, if there's no uh, wall there, there's no column underneath the stage, you would survive that hit. So Impala favoring this over Demon Island, which is just floating in the sky. And now we're going to game number four, where Luna goes down Whoa. here. Impala is going to be moving on to represent North America in the grand finals of BCX 2022. Okay, Luna has to win this game in order to stay relevant on the winner's side of bracket. Impala just needs one more to take out North America's best player right now. And it's looking like he may be able to do it right now. Has a slight damage lead. Luna trying to get some damage here. Goes for a read, unable to get anything to connect there. In terms of Luna's accuracy with these signatures, has not had the best time getting KOs early with the Scythe. That's correct, and Impala, in the meantime, has been so patient and so correct with all of these dodge punishes. When I saw Luna go for that, uh, Gravity Catcher took a look at that, d recovery, Luna's down to two stocks, but yeah, when Impala sees those dodges used for Gravity Cancels, he waits, he knows he's got those three seconds, and he gets the most optimal punish so that he can continue juggling Luna, because the where Impala has been succeeding is when he gets these neutral errors after these downlights, when he gets Luna into the sky, and he punishes those landings, and now Impala, edge guard scenario once again, Dash jumps off the side of the stage, forces Luna back onto center, and he's continuing to take control of the Fortress Alliance. Okay, and that's going to be a recovery. Beautiful response on the dodge read there, knowing that that recovery was going to be a true confirm since the dodge had been burned. But a decent amount of damage has been racked up at this point. If Luna can keep Impala in the corner here, it looks like it's not going to happen. I was going to say, you can starve him from the weapon. But despite that, they are scrapping now. Impala holding center stage. Luna is willingly putting himself in the corner. And this is a game all about control of the stage. He needs to stay in the middle. Oh, but Impala, despite you saying that, neutral lights the other way. Side light in an air, Luna dodge is down. Next time, Impala might adapt with the down air, but until then, Luna has to get back to the stage, and finally, that dodge punish gets the nair off stage, picks up the gauntlets, falls to the dare, and Impala still getting punished by the recoveries from Luna. Luna has now brought it to a dead even game. Who's gonna take this first stock here? Sidelight not punished by the downlight, and Luna brings Impala off stage, and a risky ground pound. Could that lead to a stock here? Yes, Flambo, it does. The down sink brings Luna to his winner's bracket stock. And that's one of those things that you just have to be scared of. Before, that down signature was always terrifying, but ever since those wall slip changes, it means you have to make your decision that much quicker, and that move's gonna come out and secure your stock. Now, granted, that's gonna be a beautiful ground pound from Luna to say, hold on, hold on, hold on, I'm trying to bring this to game five. Can Impala shut down America's best? Oh, he's on his way, but Luna's been trying to stop that from happening. Right side on the edge guard here. Impala dodges in, gets the neutral light, runs for the weapon, waits for Luna to go in, and Luna gets oh. the Read that three clean hits into a swap over to the gauntlets as Impala unarmed for a good 30 seconds. Will he finally be able to find something? Or is Luna gonna keep boxing him out with the gauntlets? Oh. He is. The recovery comes through, and Luna may win this game four off the back of this weapon star. As Impala on the entirety oh. of this stock has only been hit unarmed. There it is, Flambo the Spear. Can he bring it back? Oh, this is gonna be a tough one because Impala a little bit on the back foot now here. That extra defense gonna keep him surviving just a little bit longer. But how much longer is the question? Wall slip is in play here. Aggressive fight back to the stage oh. with the spear. Sarah, the bow's gonna be picked up, and you know that down stick is gonna be the available. Downstick's there, the recovery is there. He's at the top of the it. screen, and Paula takes out Luna and sends it to the loser's bracket in three, one fashion. Flambo, Impala going into this event. I mean, I was seeing the chatter everywhere. Some players even going like Impala. He's got quite a high seed going into the tournament. What's the deal there? But throughout the year, he's been getting those consistent top eights, that top five placements in the online championship. But nobody, nobody had Impala going into winner's side of grand finals to be representing North America as he 3 ones North America's PR number one after 3 owing. PR number two from North America. Stingray in the Luna. Impala is just making the run of his life here at BCX 2022. And he'll be waiting for the winner of the match that's coming up next. I can't believe that. He woke up on the right side of the bed today. I cannot believe that it happened this way. But you know what? I'd like to hear a little bit more from our analyst about how this all came to be. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh my goodness, Impala getting the upset. PR number 10 in North America beating out PR number one to earn his spot in the winner's final. Ajax, how do you feel? He 3-0'd 
Stingray, PR number two, to get into top eight. And then he proceeds to deny everyone the winner's finals of a potential Luna and Godly. It is instead Impala, who has now begun the underdog story in top eight to knock the number one seed overall into the elimination side of bracket. He was so calm the entire time until we saw a little bit of emotion show up at the end as if he was gonna just win the whole time. Zip, bro, how are you feeling right now? <laughs> well, I did say that nobody out there could mess with him except for...